everybody, welcome to the video. So as you would probably already know, I've taken a special interest in Bill Gates and Elon Musk and a few other people, given uh, everything that's going on in the world right now and where I think it's all going. I just found this article on Facebook and I'm just going to read through it. I haven't actually read any of it yet, so uh, we'll take it as it comes and let's see how we go. Alright, so... Elon Musk's internet for everyone is coming very soon. SpaceX's Starlink could be months away from bringing the world online. SpaceX's Starlink. I haven't heard of the Starlink. Gotta research that. Elon Musk says his Starlink internet service will begin private beta testing in three months. SpaceX's Starlink has over 400 satellites in orbit of a planned 40,000. Starlink is designed to improve previous satellite internet access in many more locations. Alright, so I'm guessing there might be a link between um, all these satellites, the proposed 40,000 going up, beaming down EMs to the Earth, uh, radiation. Um, not ionized, I'm not saying it's dangerous radiation, but I'm not necessarily ruling out that it could have any effects, but that's not the topic. Um, so there could be a link here between why 5G is being rolled out now, so the whole entire globe is literally just blanketed in this energy and there is no way you can go, uh, where you can't get a Wi-Fi signal or where you can't be tracked. You know, this is in the future when everyone gets a ID chip, you know, there's literally will be nowhere on the globe you can be tracked because there will be satellites everywhere. And there'll be internet in, in more locations. Yay! All right, let's move on. Elon Musk says SpaceX's ambitious Starlink satellite internet setup has made great steps towards improving good internet to previously low priority locations. Musk's Starlink plan accounts for an eventual 40,000 satellites in orbit to blanket the globe. Hey, nice use of the term blanket. To blanket the globe in internet coverage far surpassing any existing satellite internet service. So that's pretty much just uh, repeating what I just said a moment ago about the whole Earth being blanketed. So there you go. In the near ter uh, term, however, Musk has said his goal for Starlink is to get com communities that have had almost no internet options until now. For these communities, Musk says the private beta testing phase should begin in a few months with public beta in six months. Isn't it interesting that Bill wants to... Both of these guys have this really, you know, in the best interest because they're just people people and they care so much about the people. They just want to help the people. And it's interesting that Bill wants to help the people and even though he's admitted that there might be a side effects of the vaccines and he wants to get immunity pretty much from taking accountability for uh, any, for many of the inevitable uh, side effects and even death that will result that he has stated. So, and it's interesting he wants to test all of those vaccines on the same places that Musk also wants to do his private beta testing phase uh, in these communities, you know, where they're not so well off. And uh, it's just interesting. I wonder if there could be any correlation as to why these particular places are being targeted with such generosity and altruism. How many Starlink launches needed until minor moderate coverage? Are you still targeting service in the US and Canada by the end of the year? Elon, private beta begins in three months. Public beta in six months, starting with high latitudes. It's interesting that these technocrats, because if you don't know what that means, look it up, but these technocrats that literally take over uh, countries and, and even try to take over the world or have, at least have uh, influence over the world through the installation of technology, okay, and through selling te technology and uh, people buying into it that way. So they're technocrats, okay. Uh, it's interesting they can literally do worldwide things like put up satellites in the sky, it's going to beam down and blanket the globe, which, you know, you think that's an international issue that, you know, if there was an issue about it, that's for anyone on the globe to raise their hand and say, I've got a th something to say about that. And there is no question about it. There is no voting. There is no informing people unless they ask, you know, there's, there's, and even then, there's, like I said, there's no permission needed to be granted. It's just a given. That, yeah, it's fine, trust us, we say it's it's good for you, it's not going to be bad, so we're going to blanket every square inch of the planet in uh, EM frequency, because, you know, it's all good, faster internet people, big smiles all around, and that's pretty much how, how it's going. Like Musk's battery farm in rural South Australia, Starlink has always been a solution to help mostly rural, underserved communities, while rollouts of faster and better internet infrastructure have started in cities, often in university towns and government laboratory areas, 
Places with small populations and no research facilities are last in the pecking order. Something like a third of rural Americans still don't have high-speed internet as op an option. So, you know, on one hand, it's, it, is, it is, you know, obviously on the surface, this appears great. I mean, everyone gets the option for faster internet. Um, and then on the other side, there's people that might be in rural areas because they want to get away from all of that. And they don't want to be even near these towers and near these frequencies for whatever personal reasons, beliefs. Um, that's not even going to be an option. Now it's just you've only got the option to either uh, accept the high-speed internet that we are forcing down your way or uh, not accept it. But either way, the signals and the, the uh, EM frequencies are still going to be bombarding every square inch of the globe. That's not really a choice. But at least you have the option to click in and have high-speed internet. But you know, along the surface, that does sound good. The reason I'm suspicious of this guy, people like, I cop a lot of flack for bad-mouthing Elon Scum. And it's like, when you understand his background, when you understand his transhumanistic agenda alongside Bill Gates, and they've both invested billions into the giving pledge with 202 of the other world's most wealthiest men amounting to a trillion dollars overall in this giving pledge. And it's just a, uh, a an investment, pretty much, pool where this trillion dollars, okay, um, can go into what? And a trillion, uh, a trillion dollars, by the way, is a thousand times five billion. Okay, a thousand times five billion, or something like that. Uh, twenty thousand times five billion. I forget, but it's a huge number, a trillion dollars, and no one knows exactly what this is being invested towards. And in my research, it's, it goes that saying a good portion of it seems to be going towards. This new world of Internet of Things, uh, smart cities, everything being automated, everything being tele, virtual, uh, everything being a technocracy, pretty much. Where these, technoc these technocrats are literally building around us um, and forcing upon us, and they will be the rulers of it. You know, they will be the leading corporations in charge of this technocracy. Um, and yeah, it's all about this transhumanistic agenda, and this is why I don't like the guy. Elon Musk, because even when you understand his, you know, like his mother, like who was a model and she's even stars, uh, starred on the cover of like a, not a cover, but a, she was in a Helter Skelter magazine. There's a picture of her hanging out with the Charlie Manson clan. Yeah, let that sink in. So that's Elon Musk's mum uh, with the whole fucking Helter Skelter movement. And uh, so, you know, and people are like, eh, whatever, that's the mum and everyone's got their history, but let's just trust Musk because I'm sure like he learnt good values for sure. The broadband internet network that covers the U.S. is like a circulatory system. Major arteries run from big city to city, then smaller branches cover those cities and extend to nearby suburbs and exurbs. Hubs in those smaller cities branch out to reach more town. So everything will be interconnected. And this is, you know, if there is any uh, truth, which anyone who's done research will probably understand, there's a great deal of truth in the idea of a an agenda to move towards a new world order, a singular global system, um, singular military, everything's connected, run by, uh, you know, everything already is beneath the surface, a new world order, and it has been for a long time. Uh, all of, you know, world's businesses and whatnot usually come underneath one of the uh, same six major conglomerates, six industries and titans right at the top, uh, each with a different spoke on the umbrella, so to speak, and and they, you know, and they have all they own everything, all these different brands of food and entertainment and news and everything, um, so goods and services, and you know, in that sense, we do exist in a worldwide corporatocracy. But now they're going to bring that from beneath the surface to the very surface, so we actually acknowledge it's like more of a. I mean, they might not even say it's one government, but it, effectively, the World Health Organization, thanks, Bill, is going to pretty much act as a, a unifying worldwide monitoring and controlling and regulatory power. It's already doing this. Even in the event 201, they spoke about talking with all these different agencies in totally different fields uh, in respect to their field of um, medicine, you know, and health. But they, they're talking as if it's just a given that they can just uh, achieve all these legislative changes and reach out to all these other different agencies and, and that people will naturally comply and they literally speak like this, like they assume that these people are going to comply and they say, well, we can do this, we can do this. And you get the feeling when they use the term we in the event 201, they're not just talking about those working at the World Health Organization when they say we can do this. OK, so you've already got these worldwide um, places, institutions, agencies that are governing and. Basically, I think that's what Musk and Bill really want to work towards. And in order to do that, in order to link everything 
So everything is surve has surveillance, everything is monitored, everything is data tracked. Okay, absolutely no escape on any inch of the globe. This is exactly what needs to go down. The broadband internet network that covers the US is like, okay, we read that bit. People in the smallest uh, communities where the unincorporated developments or farmhouses must often be reached one at a time. They end up being the costliest places to reach with service. Why would that be? People must often be reached one at a time. What What do they mean by that? Like you, you can't use the internet to contact multiple people in further communities because the internet is so bad. You can only contact one of them. At, I don't understand even what that means. I really don't. To circumvent that entire system, Musk and satellite internet providers before him have simply put internet into space. So instead of waiting for a physical line to reach them, these oh, brilliant because we don't want just all these you know, frequencies just make you know maintained and contained into these physical structures we want it just to be beamed down wi-fi style please everywhere please thank you these customers have internet rain on them from above yay sounds amazing like satellite tv this has always been wireless by nature but to put enough satellites in orbit to cover the world. And people say, yeah, there has been satellite TV and there has been radio frequencies before, blah, blah, blah. But there's also been statistically a spike in autism and mental disorders and biological disease in proportion to each new rollout of technology that casts out these transmissions, these frequencies. Uh, but let's not look at that. That's a little bit inconvenient. So like satellite TV, which is totally fine and has no correlating slash causative evidence whatsoever with uh, negative effects. This has always been wireless by nature. But to put enough satellites in orbit to cover the world requires a huge investment in infrastructure in space. This is where Musk's planned thousands of Starlink satellites have an advantage. Yay! When Musk says high latitudes first, he's addressing a specific problem that satellite internet has had for decades. Because of the way most satellites orbit, these services have been much better for people at lower altitudes. Commercials for these services, in the northern hemisphere at least, say outright, you, all you need is a view of the southern sky. But half the world's population lives about 27 degrees of latitude. That's nearly 4 degrees higher than even the Tropic of Cancer. Brilliant, so I'm sure they can figure out a way to input uh, whatever algorithms into these satellites so that they adjust themselves to these varying uh, latitudes and so that people are all affected mutually equally with that same level of healthy radiation. I'm sure they're going to, I'm sure they're going to cover that. Musk's secret weapon is quantity. Mm, secret weapon. You can say that again. Talk about hiding in plain sight. Must go to reference quantity by putting tens of thousands of satellites in orbit because quantity is always better than quality. Thousands of satellites in orbit and connect them in a network with one another. He says he can ensure, ensure smart global coverage in a way no one ever has. Sounds fucking dumb to me, but whatever. Smart global coverage. Each solar-powered Starlink satellite will have sensors and thrusters so it can detect its location and stay in line. Oh, yeah. Also helps us stay in line, won't it? Musk also says these satellites will safely deorbit at end of life without leaving behind unnecessary space garbage, except for the fact that they will just be floating through space um, without any purpose except just being a big hunk of garbage. You know, if it's out of our space, then it's someone else's garbage. It's someone else's problem. It's not Earth's garbage. It's all right. Indeed, as both rural and urban children without internet access struggle with COVID-19, uh, Yep, okay. Coronavirus-induced homeschooling. Starlink seems more necessary than ever. Well, doesn't that go hand in hand? Wow. The latest from Elon Musk. What else has he got going? Tesla's virtual power plant is already a success. Oh, yeah, nice. Elon Musk says his Teslas can be superhuman. Yeah. Superhuman? Yeah, all right. Because this guy, he's totally for the whole transhumanistic agenda, you know? And you can tell when you look, even there's a picture of him here. Every time you see an interview of him, he literally spends one third of his time thinking and mulling over because he can't just shoot from the top of his head his true vision and the true details involved in his vision and what's going on. He can't just speak openly. He literally has to go, mm, 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 and you literally watch it. To show me one interview where he just responds candidly, straightly, answer the question, answer the question without having to fucking stop and jump a thousand fucking hoops inside his head to make sure that he's going to deliver the uh, response appropriately and safely. You know what I mean? 
He thinks too much to be trusted. He keeps too much hidden silently, mulling over, and then he delivers us a shiny, uh, minimized package of the truth. And I don't trust this guy. Especially when he's born in an environment with somebody part of the fucking Charlie Manson clan. I mean, you know, yeah, these guys people look up to as God because people have been trained through, through media and through entertainment to look up to technology as God. Science is the God on the lips of children these days, you know, and so these technocrats literally, you, if you make videos like this talking down about them, people will literally... Uh, shit on you and jump on you and call it heresy because this these people are the new gods. You know, in defense of Elon Musk, there you go. You know, so it's and even like Bill Gates, it's just people. You know, these aren't philosophers. And if you look at their upbringing and, and who they're raised by, you understand that they didn't probably have the best philosophical footing and teachings about values and life and meaning and fairness. Um, but people don't care about that. You know, look at the presidents. We don't even vote in people that. It matters about their uh, actual, if they have any understanding of philosophy or even have studied any relevant fields. You know, a lot of them come from oil. A lot of them come from industry separate and that don't involve uh, uh, being empathetic with people. They don't involve understanding society and how it functions, what people need, wisdom. People don't need that to vote for these people because it's all just a big fucking game. It's a big popularity contest and people just vote for who they think is cool, who they think is entertaining, who they think offers the most entertaining prospects. And it's a bunch of bullshit. People have really sold out to people like this who they just trust at face value without even bothering to look beneath the surface and discovering that there's actually a very freaking ugly truth brewing. And it's very easy to see. All you got to do is lift up the carpet and take a peek beneath. Lift up that surface and have a peek. And I dare you to. I dare you to. Do not just take these things at face value. Deliver it with all this shine and polish. But actually look at the grime that isn't being included. I dare you. It takes courage to do it. People don't like to hear this stuff. But, you know, ignorance is bliss. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you know, ignorance was bliss for the Jews. For a time, you know, there came a point where they're like, oh, wow, these guys are so cool. Look, they're giving us these showers. How, how caring, how considerate. Oh, wait, what's, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Ha, ha, ha! And, then, and then you think, yeah, um, mm, ignorance is, ignorance is bliss. Totally.